For our next problem, we're still doing the same thing, limit process, but now we have a fraction and we have a square root. It's gonna be kind of a long problem, so hopefully you've had some caffeine here. Keep on going all the way through. So let's jump into it. We're first gonna do, follow this formula. This is always the same formula we're using to find derivatives, okay, using limit process. We're gonna wanna find f of x plus h. To do that, you're gonna put x plus h in here for x. So I have four over the square root of x plus h, and then minus four over the square root of x, all this is gonna be divided by h. We need to get common denominators with each of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply the, the uh, multiply you get both by what it's missing in order to get common denominators. So let me go ahead and write some more space here. Okay, so here's what I had originally. I wanna get both the denominators to be square root of x times the square root of x plus h. This one requires square root of x over square root of x. This one requires us to do square root of x plus h over square root of x plus h. Okay, so originally we had just these two, that was f of x plus h minus f of x, but now we're at putting these in. We're basically multiplying each fraction by what it's missing in order to get the common denominators. Next step, we're going to re rewrite this as a single denominator. Four square root of x minus four square root of x plus h here, all this in the bottom is our common denominator. And since I have one fraction over the other, what I can do is I can clear out this fraction by taking the top one, multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom one. So if I do that, I'm gonna have a one over h times the top fraction. That means that the h that's down here is actually gonna end up at that spot. So again, if you flip this, just multiply it by one over h, on the outside, they'll just end up with an H in the bottom. So here's what it'll look like once I do that step. Then it's gonna look like you'll have this. Okay, so again, what did I do? I took the top fraction, I multiplied it by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So you're taking all this times one over H, that's how the H ended up uh, down below there. Now unfortunately, if I try and take the derivative right now and put a zero in, I'm gonna be getting division by zero happening. So what I'll do instead is I need to multiply this out by the conjugate, that's that process we talked about with limits in order to do that. So I'm gonna multiply this by four square root of x plus four square root of x plus h. I gotta do the opposite sign, so I gotta do plus. Okay. We're doing that because then we'll be able to cancel out the square roots and hopefully we'll be able to eventually cancel the h out of the bottom so we can get the answer. So anytime you have problems with square roots, you gotta do this process with the conjugate when you're finding uh, limits. Let's multiply this out. So we'll bring that up here. When we multiply this, these first two, you're gonna get four times four is 16. Square root of x, square root of x gives you just x. The middle terms are gonna cancel. I have a minus, and then what happens, I'm gonna multiply these two together, I get four times four is 16, but then that's multiplied by just x plus h because the square roots, again, are gonna cancel out when you, when you do that. Down below, I have these two things, but then I also have to do the part that I'm multiplying by, four square root of x plus four root x plus h. That was still from the conjugate part. I have to remember to include that part. It's gotta appear on the bottom. That's often a, a step that's, that's done incorrectly that I've seen students do. They forget to put this part there. That's gotta be included there as part of the answer. Okay, let's keep on going. We're going to now distribute the 16 uh, through this. Okay, so we're gonna do 16x minus 16x minus 16h. So again, you're distributing that through. The bottom doesn't change, so we're writing all this out again. All right, so now that you have that complete, we're ready to start doing some cancellations here. 
the 16 X's, those are going to cancel out. Also, the H up here can cancel with the H down below because now that I only have one term on top, I am allowed to cancel that out and rewrite it. Okay, so then I have limit, H goes to zero. I have negative 16 is all I have left on there. On the bottom I have this H is gone. Square root of X, square root of X plus H. And then inside 4 square root of X plus 4 square root X plus H. Okay, so hopefully you guys are still with me. Okay, so we've gone through all this work down to here. We've finally gotten down to a point where we're ready to put a zero in because we eliminated the H that was on the bottom. Now we don't have division by zero happening anymore. We can plug the zero in for each of the H's. So I'm going to erase this step down here so that way we have some space to do that. Okay, I'm putting in zeros for all the H's. Square root of X, and I get square root of X plus zero is just going to be square root of X. I get four root X here plus, that'll be another four root X because, again, I'm putting in zero in for H. We just need to do some simplifying on this. Okay, so when I simplify that, I get, uh, and so this is going to be my final answer here negative 16. All right, now these two when I multiply, I'm going to get x. When I uh, add these together, I'll get 8 square root of x. So then it can leave it like that, or you can write it as 8x square root of x. You can switch the order, and then you can reduce the negative 16 over 8, and you get this. So if the final answer is negative 2 over x squared of x. So that's what I'm going to write over here. The derivative is going to be negative 2 over x squared of x. That's going to be the final derivative. So now, if you're going through all that, I think it's going to be time for a break.